So where to refer? Okay, so if you have a girl that maybe comes in and you're concerned about, what's the first thing you should do? So um, the idea of whether or not we could develop a plan for yearly height screening in schools to help identify these girls could go a long way to really uh, put this on the map to give us um, some opportunity to really help these girls. Um, but obviously, how do you present it to moms and dads? Sometimes they're, they're maybe not the most receptive, you know, to everything that we say, you know, but uh, how do we make it in a, in a way? And I think we've got some precedent for this in the way we look at hearing tests and scoliosis screens, okay? It doesn't mean we're making a diagnosis. It just means that we are identifying something that probably needs to be brought up and looked at a little bit further, okay? So when, when scoliosis screens are made, uh, you know, we say there's something that, as a question, please go to your primary physician. So uh, this is a little wordy, but I kind of tried to put um, what I thought would be a reasonable way to discuss this. So I'm going to read it just to, to, from a quote here. It says, every year we measure the height of all children in our school. Growth is an important indicator of general health in a child. Your child was found to be smaller than 95% of children their age. While your child may be completely healthy, there are subtle hormonal and genetic problems that may cause problems for your child's growth. Therefore, we are recommending that you see your primary health care provider to discuss these issues further. Okay? We're not telling them they have Turner syndrome. We're not raising some terrible you know, specter of disorder. We're just simply saying, we think your child doesn't appear to be growing as they should. This might be worth discussing. Okay? You'd be amazed uh, how beneficial this could be beyond just Turner syndrome. For me, uh, identifying kids that have growth hormone deficiencies, that have celiac disease, that have thyroid problems, that have you know, problems with gastrointestinal issues, vitamin D deficiencies, it's amazing how many there are actually kids out there that if they're not growing, uh, sometimes even uh, undiagnosed uh, diabetes, uh, kids don't tend to grow very well. So it can have an impact on all issues, but in particular, girls with Turner syndrome. So what if the primary care provider expresses no concern? Well, you know, you don't need to nurse. You don't need to tell me my job. I know what I'm doing. Thank you very much. You know, so, so this is where you smile and you just get a little bit more persistent, okay? And you, you recognize that uh, maybe uh, I need to, again, be that advocate for that patient and give the parents uh, some, some reassurance and maybe, you know, looking at other resources and this would be something. The Turner Syndrome Society has got a great website that really does a great job. Uh, the Magic Foundation is another one. This is more uh, non-specific for just growth disorders, okay, and the Human Growth Foundation. I think all of those uh, websites are in your, in your handout, okay, but those, those can be a great one to, for you to look at, uh, for you to refer, because maybe mom says, you know, as a matter of fact, I have been very concerned about this, okay, and uh, what should I do and this might be something that you could you could give them okay but sometimes just a direct referral to an endocrinologist may be the best way to do this okay it, that that's what we do that's what we specialize in is growth and um, being able to to find a list of pediatric endocrinologists in your area uh, you know here in Kansas City uh, or, or other town this is going to be this uh, presentation that we're giving today here in Kansas City is actually going to be used uh, on a national platform uh, to as a continuing uh, nursing education uh, for other school nurses and so we hope to be able to get the message out so looking at uh, local resources uh, for uh, endocrinologists uh, within your your town or within your region is going to be important there's not a whole lot of us it's not like uh, you know they're standing on every street corner so you tend to be fairly uh, congregated in academic centers etc there's also local chapters of the Turner Syndrome Society as well, too. Kansas City has a wonderful chapter here, uh, but I know other large metropolitan areas do as well, and that can be a great resource for families uh, or, or, or as a school nurse to try to get more information. Okay? Turner Syndrome is a lifelong chronic disorder. It's just not for kids, and this is important as we go through. This is a life-changing diagnosis. Okay? This is going to have an impact on everything that they do and are, and it's important that uh, we recognize this and not minimize it. So long-term follow-up with an endocrinologist, they need hormone replacement therapy, estrogens, uh, infertility. Okay, as I said, 98% of, of women with Turner syndrome are infertile. Okay, so this is a huge thing from a family planning standpoint, something that uh, has to be discussed. Looking at the thyroid, 
regular and frequent hearing checks, cardiac evaluation, bone density, and different blood tests that they can be at risk for uh, problems. And so this isn't something that once you've made the diagnosis, we give them a little growth hormone, we get them growing, and they're just fine. We have to recognize that this is going to be something that is going to affect their entire life. So specialty follow-up, again, uh, growth hormone, that's where we come in. This is what we do uh, in order to maximize their linear growth as much as we possibly can. Girls with Turner syndrome are not classically deficient in growth hormone. They appear to be resistant to its actions. So we need to give them actually a little bit larger dose than we typically do with a child that may just have a, an isolated deficiency in growth hormone. So we, and the earlier we initiate this, the better and the better their outcomes. And so we may have a child that's diagnosed with Turner syndrome at birth, okay, we may start growth hormone within a few months of life. Uh, estrogen therapy is important, not only for just general well-being, but for, you know, for there's been some studies looking at cognitive health and, you know, and cognitive uh, abilities. Uh, feminization, breast development, okay? Girls are particularly aware of this, obviously, when they get into junior high and, you know, differences between the early bloomers and the late bloomers can, lot, can cause a lot of, uh, you know, social stress. And so um, if we can start growth earlier, we could potentially start um, estrogen replacement therapy earlier and that could really have a, a, a benefit in, the, in how the girl's overall outlook of herself is. Um, and the ability to, to slow down or not to slow down but to improve bone health. You get most of your, your bone strength um, through your late adolescence as a male and a female. And after we reach a certain point there's a, there's a gradual decline in the density of our bones. Okay. If you don't build up enough density at that critical point, then it's easier to develop a insufficiency of bone strength earlier, okay? So osteoporosis can develop in, an, uh, in, a, in this group earlier if we don't start that estrogen uh, early enough and give it to them in the appropriate amounts, okay? Both the patients and healthcare providers need to understand that there are specific issues unique to Turner syndrome that need to be followed closely. The main thing is to be proactive, both as a parent, as a patient, as a nurse, as a physician, I think all of us need to recognize that we need to do a lot to help our, our families uh, move forward with this di diagnosis. Because girls with Turner syndrome and women uh, should not be really regarded as a group. They're unique individuals with different skills and abilities, uh, just like everybody else, okay? Everybody here has got Turner syndrome, okay? And everyone is different. Everyone has their own goals, their own dreams, their own plans, their own uniqueness, their own stressors, their own problems, just like all of us do. Uh, but if we can help them to identify this early in life, the ability for them to become more comfortable with the diagnosis and more understanding of the diagnosis can really go a long way to help. So I'll leave that. Uh, I think we did get right to the 60 minute uh, time mark there. So. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to talk. I have included the uh, 800 number for the national office uh, in Houston, okay? And so that, uh, if there were any, since this is a national presentation, if there were any, uh, anyone uh, that uh, wanted to get more information specifically about Turner syndrome, this is a great resource. Uh, for us in the region, I will uh, give you my card uh, and uh, feel free to contact me at any time. Uh, with questions about Turner Syndrome at KU. Uh, we see uh, kids uh, of all ages uh, with uh, Turner Syndrome and would be happy to an answer any questions or any uh, questions about any kid with uh, any type of growth problem. So thank you very much for your time and I think we're going to go on to kind of a review and questions uh, in the following hour. So thanks again.